Well, I'm going to interject some uh, oblique things in his video that really don't have anything to do with silver, just as a, a warning to you people up there, as a, you know, right from the beginning. But uh, I want to talk about silver and taxes, and also Trump might really be playing 4D chess. You know, he reminds me of, I don't know, just other types that I've came across. He will go with the flow. He's like a chameleon. But when you get down to the inner core of Trump, He's still a patriot. I could see that. I mean, they don't really like him. But I know he's, he's BSing and he's playing a game, telling you what. But you're, when he's, he's playing a lot of games. But when you get down to the inner core of him, he is a patriot. Uh, I also want to say something that if you want to really know the future of the nation, look at the trends from the past. Now, we might see a radical turn. Uh, if you want to look at David Zublick's channel, I've looked at something about, you know, David Zublick. It's uh, Z-U-B-L-I-C-K, I think it is. Uh, he has put something out about what Trump's going to be doing. He's got some of it not on YouTube. You can watch it, whatever. I don't want to comment too much on it because I'm on. I'm talking on YouTube. I'm not talking on a, you know, you can still say so much on here, right? But uh, if you want to look at, go back and see where trends are going, like in other words, we got a change in the way the country's run, a change in Italy, ideology, and also we're going broke. You know, back in the 1964, when Barry Gold, this is Barry Goldwater, by the way, conservative, right? And conservative meant not just, you know, individual rights, the Bill of Rights, but also fiscal responsibility with the government, right? Johnson was the guy that ran against Barry Goldwater, and he won by a landslide on the coattails of JFK because he was his vice president. But he was 180 degrees opposite of JFK, quite obvious. Here's, here's Goldwater. And, you know, what I always picked up on is in the elections, I always looked at how the South is always thought totally different from the North. Now, I know my dad and my family, my dad was, you know, he was born and raised up in New Jersey. I swear to God, he had Southern DNA to the max. Boy, he, his mentality was conservative all the way. And he'd help anybody. He wasn't a guy to rip anybody off. He would uh, he would help anybody at any time for nothing. These people used to think he was making money off doing these favors for people. No, but he had that. I don't know. He was just like that. But um, my attitude is like that, and that's why I really moved down to uh, North Central Florida in the center, away from the coast. But um, the deal is that you know the attitudes in this country have changed, and they're actually changing for the worse because. I don't know, the whole underpinnings of everything we have is just going away. Now, I also want to tell you this, though. If silver and gold and palladium and copper and whatever the hell, platinum and zinc and every, all the other metals and it go up a lot, I'll guarantee you there's going to be a hell of a lot more taxes. When they had, um, I think it was during the 1970s, late 1970s, when they had explosion in the oil prices, um... That you know when he had, when they had the dirty dealings with <laughs> who the hell was that again? I forgot he died a couple of years ago. Um, he was dealing dealing with the oil, and he was uh, I forgot the guy's name. To tell you the truth, because I'm doing this right off the cuff. But uh, you know during the Iranian hostage crisis when it was going on, he was dealing. He was making deals with the Iranians with oil. But you know there was so much profit to be made in oil that what they did, the, the government actually put an excise tax on oil. So if anything goes way up, they'll say, hey, that you can't make that much money. We're going to tax it more. So, you know, don't go looking for the things to go to the moon because uh, what if it starts going up a lot eventually, you know, be careful of your next move. I always say real estate is always a good investment if you're smart. You know, you really, you know, especially if it's uh, land that is not... Uh, costing you a lot to maintain, you know, it doesn't have, you know, a lot of upkeep or anything, it's just raw land, farmland, or whatever, whatever the hell it is, that would be a good next investment. Now, a lot of times, if you look at during times of crisis, what happens, you know, you could see this what happened in, during the FDR administration, it happened in 1933, I guess, he got elected in 32, but he was inaugurated in 1933, the power grab went on, this was actually a, a cartoon from that time, you know, here's Congress, they're, uh, you know, they're, <laughs> they're baking up whatever, they're cooking a stew in a pot, 
And uh, he's like, throw more of that in my bowl. I want more power. That's what FDR was about. And if we ever have a crisis again, that's going to be the same deal. Now, there could be something coming up with Trump where he's going to, I don't know. You know, I noticed, I don't want to comment on what I saw on David Zublik's channel, except for this. I do know that Trump has been shrewd enough to pad a lot of money into the Pentagon. So he's got the military on his side. And generally speaking, generally speaking, not all 100% case, the military, even at the higher echelons, I know some are sellouts, but most aren't, are very um, much with the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and what this nation was founded upon. But besides that, Trump made sure they got loads of money. <laughs> so, you know, he's not going to have any problem from that angle. He also has people in his administration from, like, Goldman Sachs. I know there's been criti critics on that. But then... You know, if you're fighting one thing, you know, you don't want to, like, in other words, if you're one guy in a room and you got, like, five bad guys, you want to ally yourself with three of the bad guys to get the other two, right? If if you assume they're bad guys, you assume the military-industrial complex is bad, you assume, you know, Wall Street's bad, whatever, fine, you know? You want to ally with them. Um, he's also been very, very, very good to Israel. I, I Now, me, I think you should be very, very good to Israel, but some people are against that, but, you know, he moved the capital, he's, he's going along with, I would love that, you know, to make the capital of Israel is Jerusalem, man, I love that, to tell you the truth, uh, I'm not, you know, Jewish, but I lean that way, but, uh, you know, that's another, that's another thing that, you know, he, does, he has a friend there, too, you know, uh, so, he's probably, it looks like he's going to go after what you call the quote-unquote deep state, the worst the worst of the swamp monsters. and um, But, you know, what this could be happening is that we're going to be, like, going... It could be, at this when this happens, it could be so upsetting to the nation that, you know, if you see things like this happen, like, I don't know if this is going to happen. I mean, sometimes these things they tell you on the Internet happen, they're going to happen, they don't happen. You know, like, ah, sky's falling any minute. Ah. You know, the sky didn't fall yet, you know. But what happens is... If there's anything that upsets the general public's view of the future, you know, their outlook of the future, it affects the stock markets. And because the stock markets are really big time psychology, it's not necessarily based on reality. <laughs> A lot of times it's psychology. You know, you can pump up sales with, you know, anything you just tell people oh, the economy's great you know i always gave this story about the guy that's a hot dog sales uh salesman at a railroad uh station and where the train stops and you know he's he's a, just a simple guy selling hot dogs he's doing fine and his son went off to college and he came back from college and he says dad don't you realize there's a depression going on and then the dad reads the papers. He goes, oh, my God, yeah, there's a depression going on. He was he was in the process of expanding his business, getting more ovens, you know, might buy more storage space and whatever, and fr refrigeration to store the hot dogs before you cook them. And he says, oh, my God, yeah, there was a depression going on. So he stopped getting out there and saying, get your hot dogs, get your hot dogs. And, yes, his sales slumped. So, in other words, you got to, you know, when things are bad, you got to still freaking keep going, man. Psychology is a lot. Positive attitude will get you over the hump. So a lot of times, you know, there's going to be time maybe we're going to have a lot of drama going on. And, you know, the fear monger channels, which I hope you don't think I'm one of them, um, you know, they, they, they're they they're not going to help, you know. I'm more like hands-on, you know, just do this, do that, and you'll be fine, you know. But it might be a little bit like the Mad Max times of going through the desert on a motorcycle by yourself, and you don't know what the hell's what the hell the future is going to be. It might be like that. I don't know. You know, it might not be too you know like smooth where you think you know what what, what the next day is going to bring. So, um, also I want to bring up this little fact because you know this is one of the biggest problems we got going in the nation. It's uh. It's, it really goes back to even to the Roman times. That's why I'm showing the Roman Colosseum here. These are actually Roman reenactors. They got Roman reenactors. You know, Rome was founded at 753 B.C., April 21st, uh, and they still do reenactments to this day. And, you know, for Rome, right? The founding of Rome, they dress up like, you know, Roman soldiers, gladiators, and centurions, and whatever, you know? 
<laughs> and it's still, it, but you know, the deal is anything you want to know about how human history is going to play out or what shenanigans can happen or how even the most powerful can fall, you know, you look at the Roman Empire. But one thing that's very much shown why we have a problem in our general economy is today, Americans in 2017, I don't know what the stats are for 2018 because they're not done yet, would yet. But as of the last stats we have, statistics, Americans spent more on taxes than on clothing and food combined. And actually, the number is Americans spent almost almost twice as much on taxes than food and clothing combined. And you know, a lot of times people have got food stamps. You know how many people are on food stamps? Loads of people. Loads of people. And, what, and where are people buying their clothes where they got a decent price on it? They're buying it from, like, China or something. You know, Chinese-made clothes or whatever, or Vietnamese or Indonesian. They're not even made here. If they're made here, the clothes would be prohibitively expensive. So if we ever have, um, you know, revaluation of the Chinese yuan or something like that, or a revaluation of the dollar, we're really going to be SOL, man. Especially if commodity prices go up. Because if commodity prices go up, food prices go up, because oil and energy, ener- food, food production is a very energy-intensive endeavor. And uh, so we're leading to, I don't know, we're leading to some serious problems. But one thing that might be coming up is Trump might be going really after the deep state to the max. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm just looking at something with David Zublik's channel, I don't know if that's true. Um... But, you know, I don't really like this, what he was saying, you know, because I was thinking I don't like a leader having too much power. But then again, if it turns out to being a communist having the power, I don't need that. You know what I mean? You know, Trump might just might be the Chiang Kai-shek of America, except hopefully he's going to be wholly 100% successful and knock out the bad guys. Because if we really go down the trail of full communism, you know, I mean, Bernie Sanders is probably, you know what I mean? We're, everything's going to go downhill all the way. And if you have any kind of um, precious metals or anything like that, you know, you know what? You know, you could say, oh, they can't take, they can confiscate them in this way, taxation. Anytime you trade them in at your bullion dealer or whatever the hell it is or whatever you go to, and you can say, oh, you could do direct trade. Well, that's not that easy. You know, do you ever walk into freaking retail stores and you say, ah, I want to do, here's some silver or something. Get real. It doesn't happen like that, you know. And actually, if you look back in 1968, again in the South, the South went with the most conservative guy. I know Wallace has been smeared with, he was a segregationist or something. But, you know, if I, lo- I looked at a lot of stuff Wallace said besides the segregation, you know, other things he said. The guy was actually freaking really good to go, except for that one issue. And then he changed his mind on that issue. He was a hell of a lot better than Nixon. He was not. Nixon was a guy that was all in there owned by the deep state, pretty much. Conservative on the outside. But, you know, in retrospect, if you're looking at Hubert Humphrey, in 19, Hubert Humphrey was a patriot. George McGovern. I mean, they're liberals. I know that. They're, you know, I wasn't a fan of these guys way back when. But compared to the stuff we got today that you call liberals. I don't even want to use that word. Communist? How about communist, you know? If you look at the communist politicians we got today, these guys, you were Humphrey and George McGovern look like saints compared to the guys they got today. And this is the trend that's going on. So we're either going to go one way or the other way, full tilt. And Trump might be the guy that's <laughs> going to make it. I don't know. He might be pulling something out of his out of the hat, but then maybe he might be prevented. Uh, if you look at actually how the country is really thinking, um, you know, this is a, it's a political map, but this is really a representation of the 2010 congressional uh, races. You know, in other words, when, you know, the increase in blue and red, whatever it was, in 2010, uh, basically it was a rejection of Obama, right? Except for, like, uh, looks like Delaware, you know, that was the only place Obama's uh, blue team won more. This was in 2010. But they're going by the counties, you know. And also, I guess, a little piece down here in New Orleans, right? But, um, you know, gen- but generally speaking, when they went with the House of Representatives, in, uh, you know, in the t- you because know, it was between the 2008 and 2012 election, this was 2010. In other words, this was like a major, you know, like, we don't like you, Obama, because you're just too communistic or some garbage, you know, maybe that's what it was. 
And you know, in, in the Northeast, you know, this is the only reason I kind of have my, my leaning toward the only state up in New York, uh, New York, in New Northeast that's worth the crap is mainly New Hampshire. And look at that. <laughs> Pennsylvania's not too bad <laughs> in parts of New York, but man, the rest of it. Anyway, um, but you know, this is actually. When you're looking at the trends from like even the 60s to today, well, we're going off the cliff. And Trump might have something up his sleeve. You know, I know I never really believed this stuff myself with this guy because uh, he is a he is a BS artist, really. But the guy, when you get deep down to him, he is a patriot to the max. Um, and you know, he's always been in a labyrinth of everything. Well, let me just say this. I mean, he's, he, you know, he deals with everybody, right? Uh, you know, I know I know. a lot of people on YouTube, they always think everything's, uh, you know, I didn't want to say the J word, but what a Jewish conspiracy, right? They always say that on YouTube. They, people think that. I'm going to tell you this. From my experience, and I worked for some guys that were pretty heavy hitters, and they were Jewish guys, right? They were not screwed up. I mean, yeah, they were thinking about money and whatever a lot, you know, but they were good guys, you know. You know the people that really screwed up? The ones that are around them. It wasn't them. It was the ones that kissed their butt. So, I mean, even if you take somebody like the Rothschilds or something, which is a very popular, you know, target for the YouTubers and stuff. I mean, I put stuff out on the guy, but I wasn't really being too mean to him. But, uh, you know, it's really the people that are, you know, working around them. And, you know, it's not even like the policy of these top guys. You know, I mean, I can't stay in Bloomberg and Feinstein. I mean, they're bad, and Soros is bad, you know. But not generally speaking, it's, uh, it's you know, it's just other people doing this crazy stuff that's communistic more than anything. It really is. It really is. you got to get down. You know, I've seen this so many times. You know, Trump is kind of a guy that, like, um, you know, he's a minnow, really, even though he's a multi-billionaire. He's a minnow in the field of, you know, the real power money. Because the money that, that's out there, you know, if you look at that Forbes list, that list is not telling you everybody. If I personally have seen stuff, which I thought, I keep I, I kept thinking, this is why I kind of got out of accounting, because I felt like, well, what the hell am I getting into crazier and crazier shit? Um, I still do it, but not that much. But, um... Uh, you know, multi-millionaire guy's got 50 million, 100 million, what's one. And you see these other people have got way more than that, you know. Then you got people in billions. And I'm finding out, you know, I'm, I'm coming across people that had billions that weren't showing up, which I knew they had billions, that weren't showing up on the Forbes list. Like a guy came up with a, a certificate of deposit in euros, a billion euros on cash certificate of deposit. He came up with that for private placement plat- platform investment that was off, you know, the uh, public trading platforms, private placement platform. I've seen a number of those and other people that had, like, warehouse stores of made stuff, different types of isotopes that made gold look like, the, you know, like it was dirt in value compared to what these isotopes were worth. Um, a lot of different things. Emeralds, you know, a I don't know if you call it a constellation of emerald, emeralds or whatever else it was. It was like $650 million. It wasn't exactly that number. It was 600 something million dollars. Sto- actually stored in Saratoga, but in, in Florida, in a naval base in their security, uh, in their vault, because he didn't trust the European storage facilities or whatever the hell it was. But there's a lot of stuff out there that we don't really know. You know, if you're looking at the, the, you know, the financial news, you can read that crap all you want. You don't even know who's got the money. It's really a lot of it's underground. Actually, what they do is they do invest in true hard assets. Most of the super wealthy are really heavy into real estate and real estate that turns a profit. That's what Trump's into, you know. Um, and you know that's how you make money. So you hear you got you know, you know. I said that this was uh, Viva La Puta. It's his love. I don't know what the hell it says. Uh, this chick. <laughs> I'm in a cool sock, but Viva La Puta. Anyway. But, uh, you know, I, I'm actually going to put out a lot more other videos and actually put into uh, some of these other things. You know, I was really excited about getting uh, the patch with uh, getting into the mechanized cavalry with the Sons of Confederate Veterans. I want to throw this in here, but 
um, it's not it nothing to do with silver, but you're going to see an up to upcoming videos. I'm going to actually, although I can't get out of here for a few days because I got the kitty cats, I'm going to try to get out to a lot of uh, the Confederate sites and the Confederate flag sites. But I also want to make people aware that you know it's not a political thing, and um, it's actually related to the silver stuff because it's all about independence, financial independence, and um, you know. If people, well, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to play it the smart way where people don't get offended or whatever. But uh, I like what this guy put on his back: <laughs> six semper tyrannis, which means you know, get rid of the tyrants, basically. Um, which is really what you know the silver crowd is all for, too. You know what I mean? Um, I got, you know, and I, I felt good when somebody has this. I have that one freedom because if I get the other rockers, I'm gonna have the freedom on there because I'm thinking, hey, it's freedom of freaking. Freedom of of uh, getting away from financial tyranny, which is really what. But um, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be I'm going to you know after, um, tonight I'm going to be pulling out my bike and do, trying to do the rear tire and uh, not just the rear tire but uh, the swing arm bearings, which could be a pain in the ass. That's the one I'm kind of not looking forward to. Not so much the rear tire and shortening the chain, putting a different sprocket on it and bearings, wheel bearings, the swing arm bearings. <clears throat> I don't like doing those things, but. Uh, after I get all that stuff done with the front tire and all the other stuff in a primary chain, I'm going to take a cruise up to uh, North Florida. This is near the Georgia border. It's north of I-10. Another Sons of Confederate Veterans uh, flag up there. That um, And, you know, I look at this, you know, it almost goes along with this silver stuff because, you know, it's, it's fighting the powers, really what it is. You know, what happened... You know, in the war between the states, what's happening between the communists and the conservatives? What's going on there? You know, it's really about financial freedom or individual rights and limited government. You know, they, they always like to compartmentalize it with, uh, you know, I'm not sure if even if like when he's in, they're interviewing people on it with the Sons of Confederate Veterans, you know, still, you'll see a little snippet. You know, it's about heritage. They might be saying more than that and the media is cutting them off. They might be saying it's about limited uh, government, financial response, uh, fiscal responsibility, and individual rights. They're probably not saying that. You know, they're probably not saying that at all. Uh, you know, because I think the media is very much attuned to, uh, you know, what the oligarchs of America really want, total financial control. Uh, so, you know, and that's really what the silver crowd is fighting, too. You know, it's a fight against total financial control. You know, it's your own money, per se. Although, you're not going to be able to take a little coin and go to the gas station and say, give me some gas. You know, that ain't going to work. I don't know how this is going to work because I think if you go to trade it in uh, later on and say it went way the hell up, they are going to 1099 and tax the crap out of you with excise crack taxes. They're going to do this. They're going to do this. I think they are unless, I don't know, I don't know what, what could possibly change this because... If I look back, well, let me just say this about this flag here. You know, this is uh, this is going to be quite a ride for me to get the hell up to this one. So if I start fix the bike and stuff, it should be able to cruise up I-75 at 80 miles an hour, get up there. And uh, I'll take some video of this. Um, but if you look at, you know, what happened in 1930s during the Great Depression, the first thing when the government was, or the state governments, you know, this is another thing, you know, states' rights. Well, even the state governments, when they started losing monies, look what they did. The first thing they did was they implemented the state sales tax. There was no state sales tax before 1930. In, in the 1930s, 26 out of 50 states implemented a state sales tax. And then in the 40s and more did. Now practically every state has a state sales tax. And mo practically every state has state income tax. So, I mean, like, states' rights, screw that. I mean, that's not even the whole issue. It's like, screw them, you know? American Revolution, you know? And by the way, um, I was looking at some flag projects out here. I did a Excel spreadsheet. I did find a way to uh, calculate with, um, um, you know, with aluminum <laughs> using 6061T6, which is stronger than 6063T6. 
uh, which is in flag, flagpoles use 6063. I did a bunch of calculations, wall thickness, diameter of the pipes, and I got the calculations off of um, a place that does calculations for roll cages for race cars. And I found, you know, and I could go up to a 33, 30, 35 foot flagpole for about, you know, 775 to 800 bucks, which will handle hurricane 100 mile an hour plus winds with a flag. So there's a way to get these things up there cheap. And uh, if they get mad at the Confederate flag, I personally like the Bennington flag. Even though this flag never really flew over anything, <laughs> you know, it supposedly flew over the. I had a video on it with the Bennington flag and the Bennington flag. But you know what? You know, it's not. I, I'm not really so much. You know, the American flag is great. But in a way, if you, you're taking the American flag as I worship the federal government, I don't really like it that way. You know what I mean? It's like I worship, I like the country, and I like the principles of what it stands for. So, like the 1776 Bennington flag, even though it really never flew at the Battle of Bennington, which was, uh, it's, you know, part of the Saratoga, New York campaign, the Revolutionary War of 1776. You know, if 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 you're in an area where the you know, the other Confederate thing is too emotional and whatever. This is a good one to fly because people understand 76, you know, it's a little bit different, though. It's got seven-pointed stars and all this kind of garbage. But we're into a pretty, we're coming up to a pretty hairy situation, I'm going to tell you, economically. Um, I personally don't think, you know what, my gut reaction is this. We're in this situation. Um, I know it's partly because the, the American you know, the whole situation, economically, decay of society, decay of morality, decay of, uh, in, you know, in individual industriousness, creativity, uh, work ethic, the whole nine yards. We're in this kind of decay across the board. Not, you know, it's partly because of media influence in Hollywood corruption, brainwashing the masses. But then the masses are allowing themselves to be brainwashed. Me, I don't ever watch um, cable TV. I mean, somebody. I mean, sometimes I watch. Sometimes I see. You know, I go in a, a place where you're waiting around, and they got the damn TV on. I'm like, everybody's glued to it. I'm like, oh, what is this crap? You know, you know, like they're interested. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You know, it's a talk show. I mean, I don't care. I mean, I, I understand why things are wrong because um, people have actually lost their, you know, you know, independence and um, fortitude. You know, the rugged independence and fortitude like they used to be. You know, I know it's been done in small incremental steps through basically programming people to be a certain way, through media advertising and Hollywood and all this kind of garbage. But you know what? If you just avoid that stuff, you're not going to get programmed by it. That's the thing. Uh, But I think we're actually into, uh, you know, having a very hairy situation coming up in America because... Trump, I think he's, at the inner core of Trump, he's legit. But he's not going to be able to pull nothing off if, you know, he's got too many enemies around him. That's no way. That's not going to happen. He's not going to He's not going to just jump on his sword like an idiot, you know. Um, he's going to have to make some deals that, whatever. And But I personally think, you know, one of the problems where he's going to be able to pull this off is that the American public itself who is the, really the strongest thing in this country that can influence things, have been corrupted and undermined. That's really the problem in, all the way. You know, it's like you, if you can't if you can't get that back where people got some backbone and understand, you know, i got to take care of myself. I'm not going to rely on the government or whatever the hell it is. If you get people in that mentality, you know, strong, rugged individualism, and, you know, which goes along with individual rights, goes along with individual responsibility, then, you know, the big banks are not going to be able to freaking own your butt. The tax man is not going to be able to take a hold of you. A lot of different things. But, you know, really, we actually voted ourselves into this situation. That's why I put up those former electoral college maps, because, you know, Johnson, God, you know, just because he was vice president under Kennedy, he wins by a landslide. Goldwater would have saved the nation. No way. It would definitely, you know what I mean? No way would Johnson have done it. Um, you know, even Nixon, who was supposedly quote-unquote conservative, 
which was he was elected because of the backlash against Johnson. Wallace would have been better. I know he, I know about his stand on, but that's the only thing they so, they focus in on. You know, the guy was not going to, if he got to be president, he wouldn't have been a segregationist, you know. He'd just have been a limited government guy. And actually, if you look at, you know what, if you want to really know how the minorities are getting screwed over, I'll just reveal it to you, man. But you know what, people probably ain't going to listen to me. But anyway, you know, if they're a minority, they might not listen to me. They'll probably tell me, hey, you're full of shit. But you know what, you know, you really want to know how, how you get screwed over? You look at the American Native Indian peoples, right? They were doing fine for tens of thousands of years, right? I mean, they're surviving. They were like, you know, they're living a long time. They they hunted the buffalo or whatever they had to do, uh, you know, good hunted beaver or whatever the heck they did, you know, grazed craw- corn. They were doing pretty good, man. They, they even understood how to make better dwellings. And uh, a lot of the white settlers, settlers came over to New England. They understood how to make dwellings that were warmer and stronger and all this because they're round. They're, you know, way to set them up. And uh, as soon as the American government came in and they took over the lands and they said, here, we're going to put you on uh, um, food allocations, well, it just made them like they didn't do nothing. It, it cut out their entire strength of the people. That's exactly what they're doing. All That's what the government's doing with the minorities. And you know what? It's deliberate. It's deliberate. You really want to know the truth? That's what the hell's going on. You disagree with me? Go ahead. I'm going to tell you. That. I know what they're doing. I know what they're doing at the top. The, the ones that are the elitists... They hate both the minorities and they hate the Caucasians that are independent mind, minority, independent minded. They hate both of us. That's really what it is. And you know, there's nothing more independent minded than people that don't even want to deal with uh, the financial system and want to own their own money, right? You see what I mean? I mean, that's part of the reason I like the bike. You know, I actually got out of the motorcycle stuff because there were so many uh weekend rubs and stuff i got i just kind of got out of it but you know i got pumped up on it again when i went got into the i just joined the uh scvmc i said man i'll ride for this patch man any day man i'm all i'm all, all fired up now you know because it's uh for, for freedom You're like six semper tyrannis you know that's that's a good that's a good one to add on to the back there because i like that put what this guy put on there that's smart that's smart because it tells you the whole deal. But that's really what you're doing with metals. Six Semper Tyrannus. Get rid of the tyrants. Now, you know, I mean, people criticizing Trump because, you know, he's dealing with Wall Street. Wall Street's all around him in his administration. But like I said, you can't make too many enemies or they're going to take you out. He's going to take out certain people. It's the worst ones. Like Comey, <laughs> Clinton's, and Bush's. Bushes are not a conservative, and, and you know they're both the freaking power grab and communist yo-yos, man. Um, but um, you know, I'm not sure how the deal is going to work with if the government starts going broke. It's going to be kind of scary because um, when I look at what they're going to do, is government is like a I don't know, it's. You know, I don't want to call it mafia because I got respect for the mafia and I don't have respect for the government. But let's call it the mafia and on steroids. It, it's like if they're running, if their income starts dropping, they got to find other resources. And what they do is they tax the crap out of people more. Like I remember, I told you about the sales tax, the state sales tax coming into being. Well, also in 1932, they dreamed up, dreamed up the new plan was the gasoline tax. And they already had prohibition in place. That didn't go away until 1933. You couldn't even make your own alcohol to drive your car. You know, it wasn't. You know, that was the whole purpose of prohibition. It was actually to, to stop the independent farmers from competing with Standard Oil, which is Rockefeller. You know that, right? <laughs> I mean, that's really what it was. Hundred percent had nothing to do with the evils of alcohol, and you know, it breaks up the families. Rockefeller funded those people as a front to get his competition out of business. That's always the case, man. You know, anyway, but, you know, I'm a little afraid for the future in one way because I think they're going to tax the crap out of uh, Americans if the uh, the bottom falls out of the stock market and, you know, if the, the, the 
the, the government needs more funding. They're just going to try to steal it from the economy, from you know, from the people themselves, which is what FDR did. You know, not and actually, it wasn't just FDR; it was all the states did it too. I mean, so much for states' rights, man. I mean, it's like, you know, <laughs> I'm more like individual rights, man. The hell with states' rights, individual rights. I mean, states' rights is kind of slowing down one big gorilla. But the states could be little gorillas, you know what I mean? They could be like stomping the people too, and, and the states could, could be over overbearing. It's individual rights, man, or community rights, or whatever the hell it is. So, um, but it's going to be a it's going to be a long, lonely trip getting through this next freaking uh, fiscal crash. I think it's coming up. We're overdue for it. It's about um, the last. Well. I know they had the fiscal, the bottom of the fiscal crisis where the money markets almost went under was September, late September of 2008. But it was actually, I think it was March of 2009 where the bottom of the uh, Dow, the equities went down. And usually you have about a seven or eight year period whereby, you know, you have a cycle. But it could be up to 10 years. But if you're figuring 10 years, 10 years from the last, well, we're right about 10 years. So, you know, there's also a possibility, I was thinking, is, you know, if they want to really pull the rug out from underneath the election for 2018, for November, for the midterms, <laughs> what about October? You know what happens in October? Usually, that's when most of the market crashes happen. And if that happens, if that happens, you're going to see a serious drop in the price of palladium. Because you know why? Palladium is 95% industrial. And you're also going to see, you might even, well, I think you'll see more of a serious drop in palladium because palladium actually is pretty, running pretty hot and heavy. It's over the price of gold. And if you see a market downturn, I mean, yeah, if platinum could get affected pretty good because it's over 60% industrial, but palladium's over 90% industrial. But the other side of it is platinum prices are severely depressed because platinum should be much higher because of all the turmoil that's going in South Africa. Palladium is going to take a major hit if the markets go down. I don't know when they're going to go down, though, but it wouldn't surprise me if they went down in October. Wouldn't surprise me at all, man. You know? I mean, it's a big surprise when it happens. You know, that's usually when it happens, you know? If you want to knock out a politician, knock out the economy. That's how you do it, man. Almost every time. Actually, actually, these midterm things, they don't look good for the president. You know why? Because historically, a first-term president for midterm usually went against him, no matter what it was. If he's a first-term Democrat, first-term Republican, the midterm, the opposite party usually gained ground. You know that? That's usually what happens. But I don't know if that's going to happen this time. Not all the time. But I think there's only one time that didn't happen. I think that was in 1946 or something like that. So, you know, we got some freaking wild times coming up, man. But, um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna actually going to focus. I've been focused in on a lot of subjects. I'll be out there, right? I'm probably going to do some video on working on my bike tonight. It's already getting dark out, but at least it's not going to be so freaking hot. <laughs> it's been unbearably hot here in Florida, man. I'm like, God. It's like... Uh, it's October, and it's like it's August. It's more like August Florida weather. It's unusually hot. But um, I'm probably going to do some of this bike stuff tonight and uh, get some video out on it and uh, doing the wheel bearing and shortening the chain and all this crap. I know a bunch of stuff, but I don't feel like doing it. I'm really not looking forward to doing the swing arm bearings. I hate doing those things. But um, they're a pain in the ass. <laughs> you got to watch how you balance. If I had a bike stand, I guess it would beg Jack and be all right. But... Uh, you know, if I had it like the regular, um, I just use a scissor jack from a car. That's what they get pain in the ass about doing some of this shit. But, um, you know, the thing is, you know, why we're in this situation, and it's like you just can't one guy, one guy is not going to come in there and fix everything. The American people have gotten soft. You know, the millennial generation, man, they bitch about the baby boomers. And you know what? I agree that the baby boomers are a lot worse than a traditional generation. I, I agree with that. But compared, pff, you know, 
man, if you go back, if you go into the future, they're going to look at the millennials like they really screwed up everything really bad. You know, I think the baby boomers got were wor- way worse than the tr- tr- traditional generation from the 1930s and 40s that lived through the Great Depression and World War II. But, you know, um, you know, definitely not, you know, nowhere near is like the way the, way the media presents them. Um, but, you know, everybody's an individual. I could tell, I could say this, you know, I've never been one for, uh, being around a crowd that, you know, gets out there and plays golf with the little white bull and wears the pink shirt and the golf carts and, oh, go to the restaurant. Yeah. Well, I'm not like that, man. I'm like, uh, you know, hands on do, do DIY person all the way. Um, even if I can not know how to do something, I'll figure out how to do it. You know, I'm very independent minded. So that doesn't really go along with the baby boomer attitude, but definitely doesn't go along with the millennial attitude. But let me say that, you know, the whole nation is kind of rotted to the core at its foundations. So even if you had Trump is able to pull all this stuff off, I don't know how it's going to go for the future because the nation's so stupid. They're probably going to vote for a communist and they'll get on. It'll all get undone anyway. There's a danger of having. One person have too much power, but you know I look at it as if Trump's knocked out of knocked out of office, man. The next one that that's what sucks, man. I mean, the only way to get too much power is they got the money, and the way to get the money is through taxation. So, you know that's that's the whole game. And how do you avoid that? It's almost impossible. That's what sucks. And the more they got everything by electronic finance. And every, everything's recorded. You know, everything you do, you know, financially is recorded. I mean, you got no way around it. So, you know, that's one of the problems. I mean, these people that are in politics right now, or politicians and stuff, you know, they can tell you they're your servant all they want, but they're definitely not your servant. <laughs> they're not, you know. I mean, why the hell would they even bother doing that stuff? I mean, God, I would hate being in Washington, D.C. myself. <laughs> Oh, God, I would have a lot of... If I would tell you what, if I was president, man, I'd have a lot of fun. I'd be out there shooting my 1911-45 on the White House grounds and saying, yeah, you know, anyway. <laughs> I would be, man. I'd be riding my motorcycle in the, in the Oval Office. I'd park my Harley right there, right smack in the middle. But, you know, that wouldn't happen, you know. <laughs> but that's what I would do. But I've done things like that in... Uh, you know, I pulled the motorcycle in the office already. I've done things like that where you're not supposed to. I've done things like that. So, that was in my past life. No, <laughs> when I was a little crazier. But I was like, it was a lot crazier, to tell you the truth. But I got to watch my ass on that thing, man, because uh, you, you're lucky you only go so far with motorcycles. I can tell you that right now. Anyway, over and out. So, just remember, uh, Americans spend more on taxes than clothing and food combined. All right? And it's almost twice as much on taxes than clothing, clothing and food combined. But if the American government starts to go broke and they have a crisis, they're going to tax even more. Mm. And I said, you know, if they, if they, if silver goes way the hell up because the dollar starts going down or whatever, or you know what's going to happen? Commodities in general are going to go up. It's not going to be just silver. It'd be nice if silver just went up, but you know, it's going to be. You know, all the metals are going to go up. Maybe not exactly in unison, but they're going to all go up. Their lead's going to go up. Zinc's going to go up. Cadmium's going to go up. Copper's going to go up. Nickel's going to go up. Then also oil's going to go up. Food prices are going to go up. Home heating oil, gasoline, the whole nine yards. Anything you buy, pharmaceuticals are going to go up, which I don't like pharmaceuticals, but they'll go up. So, you know... You know, it's not going to be something that it's going to be a rosy picture where you're just going to sit back and freaking make a lot of money because you got silver. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, really how you make money? Don't spend money. You know, you don't spend money. You learn how to independently do things yourself that you would have to pay somebody to do the work for you. And that is why you'll see a lot of videos on my channel, how to do something, how to do something. Because it's the, the, the suits and the ties, they, they're yo-yos, man. I'm going to tell you that right now. I work, you know, I mean, they're smart and real. They're real smart in some ways, but they're not smart in a lot of other ways. I can tell you that right now. I like trying to have a broad-based education where you know a lot of different things. 
I don't really know everything in one area perfect, but uh, I know enough to get by. <laughs> and uh, I know enough to get by. And, well, I know qu- quite a bit in the accounting world, but you know what? To tell you the truth, with money, it's not just numbers. It's shrewdness and understanding trends. And uh, I think the trends are that when we go into a crisis, taxes are going to be your biggest enemy. They really are when we go into a crisis. And, again, you know, when you're looking at these Confederate symbols, that was all over taxation. Taxes, taxes, limit, you know, the government would dig. The Confederate Constitution uh, limited the government and a great deal. Uh, the spending limits, uh, the infrastructure mill limits, you needed two-thirds of both bodies of the Congress to uh, raise appropriations of money for spending, you know? And I don't know if it's too emotional, you know, the Bennington flag is a nice representation. You know, it shows you the spirit of 76. It's got 76 on it. But, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you this. There's still hope for this nation. You know why? I'm showing you this picture of Rome, right? This is a Roman reenactor. Rome was founded 753. Well, they, they give the date, 1753 uh, B.C., before Christ or before the Common Era, whatever you want to use. April 21st, and, you know, Romulus and Ramus, you know, they were found at Rome, and, you know, Romus killed Ramulus, Ramus, and whatever, it is named after Romus, Romulus, right? So, but here it is, 2000, over 2,700 years later, you got um, Rome, they're doing Roman reenactments, celebrating their history. <laughs> I don't think America's going to go away. Way because I think we're actually the rebirth of Rome. I really do think we are. I don't think America's America's going to suffer some freaking real serious problems, but I don't think America's going to go away. You know, Italy suffered, Rome and Italy suffered bigger problems than ever Rome, America ever has in its short history. And here you're seeing they still got it in them, they understand what their heritage is, right. That's that's another thought for like uh, the SUV and the SUV MC. <laughs> the heritage might be around thousands of years from now, just as it is in Italy with 